Chapter number two: Life processes in living organisms, part one. Various organ systems are continuously performing their function in human body. Various systems like digestive, respiratory, circulatory, excretory system, and various internal and external organs perform different functions, but through coordination. For functioning of all these life processes, continuous source of energy is required. To produce this energy, not only food stuff like carbohydrates, proteins, and fats, but also oxygen is required. All these food stuffs and oxygen are transported to cells via circulatory system. As plants are autotrophic, they produce their own food, and some of the food is utilized by them, and remaining food is stored in plant parts like fruits, leaves, stems, roots, etc. Humans and other animals are heterotrophic. so they are dependent on plant and some animals for food sources of carbohydrates fruit grain sugarcane potato sweet and cereals like wheat maize ragi jowar millet rice etc let us understand what respiration is in living organisms respiration occurs at two levels number 1 at body level oxygen and carbon dioxide are exchanged between the body and the surroundings number 2 at cellular level food stuffs are oxidized either with or without oxygen carbohydrates are used for production of energy which is required on daily basis this energy is obtained in the form of atp that is adenosine triphosphate glucose is a type of carbohydrate which is oxidized step by step for energy production this is called cellular respiration cellular respiration occurs amongst the living organism by two methods aerobic respiration with the help of oxygen and anaerobic respiration without the help of oxygen a aerobic respiration in aerobic respiration three processes are involved glycolysis tricarboxylic acid cycle electron transfer chain number 1 glycolysis the process of glycolysis occurs in cytoplasm a molecule of glucose is oxidized step by step in this process and two molecules of each that is pyruvic acid atp nadh2 and water are formed molecules of pyruvic acid formed in this process are converted into molecules of acetyl coenzyme a Two molecules of NADH2 and two molecules of CO2 are released during this process. Number two, tricarboxylic acid cycle. Both molecules of acetyl CoA enter the mitochondria. Cyclic chain of reactions called as tricarboxylic acid cycle is operated on it in the mitochondria. Acetyl part of acetyl CoA is completely oxidized through this cyclical process. and molecule co2 h2o nadh2 fadh2 are derived tricarboxylic acid cycle is also known as tca cycle or citric acid cycle or krebs cycle number 3 electron transfer chain electron transfer chain reaction is operated in mitochondria only molecules of nadh2 and fadh2 formed during all above processes participate in electron transfer chain reaction due to this three molecules of atp are obtained from each nadh2 molecule and two molecules of atp from each fadh2 molecule besides atp water molecules are also formed in this reaction let us summarize aerobic respiration food is oxidized with the help of oxygen involving three processes of which glycolysis is carried out in cytoplasm giving the products such as acetyl coa and two molecules of each nadh2 and co2 which are then transported to mitochondria and via tricarboxylic acid cycle are broken down to form molecules co2 h2o nadh2 fadh2 the molecules of nadh2 fadh2 formed during these processes are further broken down to form atp molecules which will release energy and water molecules thus a molecule of glucose is completely oxidized in aerobic respiration 
and molecules of CO2 and H2O are produced along with energy. It is important to keep in mind that NADH2 is nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide and FADH2 is flavine adenine dinucleotide. Both enzymes are formed in the cells and used in cellular respiration. Why ATP is called as energy currency of the cell? ATP is adenosine triphosphate, which is known as energy-rich molecule. Energy is stored in the bonds by which phosphate groups are attached to each other. These molecules are stored in the cells as per need. Chemically, ATP is triphosphate molecule formed from adenosine ribonucleoside. It contains a nitrogenous compound adenine, pentose sugar ribose and three phosphate groups. As per the need, energy is derived by breaking the phosphate bond of ATP to ADP. What happens in the cell when there is insufficient amount of carbohydrates in the body? This can happen due to exceptional conditions like fasting and hunger. If there is insufficient amount of carbohydrates, then lipids and proteins are used to generate energy. In case of lipids, they are converted into fatty acids, whereas proteins into amino acids. Fatty acids and amino acids are converted into acetyl CoA and energy is obtained through complete oxidation of acetyl CoA by the process of TCA cycle and electron transfer chain in mitochondria. Anaerobic respiration. Some organisms cannot live in the presence of oxygen. Example, many bacteria. Such living organisms have to perform anaerobic respiration for energy production. Glycolysis and fermentation are two steps of anaerobic respiration. Pyruvic acid produced through glycolysis is converted into other organic acids or alcohol with the help of some enzymes in this process. This is called as fermentation. Some higher plants, animals and aerobic microorganisms also perform anaerobic respiration instead of aerobic respiration if there is depletion in the oxygen level in the surrounding. For example, seeds perform anaerobic respiration if the soil is submerged under water during germination. Our muscle cells also perform anaerobic respiration while performing the exercise. Due to this, less amount of energy is produced in our body and lactic acid accumulates due to which we feel tired. So now can you answer the following questions? Number 1. Which type of cellular respiration performs complete oxidation of glucose? Answer. Aerobic cellular respiration performs complete oxidation of glucose. Number 2. Which cell organelle is necessary for complete oxidation of glucose? Answer. Mitochondria is a cell organelle necessary for complete oxidation of glucose. Process of glycolysis was discovered by three scientists, Gustav Emden, Otto Mehrhoff and Jacob Parnas, along with their colleagues. For this purpose, they performed experiments on muscles. Hence, glycolysis is also called as emden mehrhoff parnas pathway or EMP pathway. The cyclical reactions of tricarboxylic acid cycle were discovered by Sir Hans Kreb. Hence, the cyclical process is also called as Krebs cycle. He has been awarded the Nobel Prize in 1953 for this discovery. What is the source of proteins? Grains, legumes, fish, meat, milk are different sources of proteins. What are they made up of? Proteins are the macromolecules formed by bonding together many amino acids. Proteins of animal origin are called as first class proteins. For example, fish meat, milk products. We get 4 kilocalorie of energy per gram of protein. Amino acids are obtained after digestion of proteins. Those amino acids are absorbed in the body and transported up to each organ and cell via blood. From these amino acids, organs and cells produce various proteins necessary for themselves and the whole body. Lipids From where do we obtain the lipids? The substances formed by specific chemical bond between fatty acids and alcohol are called as lipids. 
Digestion of lipids consumed by us is nothing but their conversion into fatty acids and alcohol. Fatty acids are absorbed up and distributed everywhere within the body. From those fatty acids, different cells produce various substances necessary to themselves. For example, the molecules called as phospholipids, which are essential for producing plasma membrane, are formed from fatty acids. Besides, these fatty acids are used for producing hormones like progesterone, estrogen, testosterone, aldosterone, etc. and the covering around the axons of nerve cells. We get 9 kilocalories of energy per gram of lipids. Excess of lipids are stored in adipose connective tissue in the body. Vitamins What are vitamins? Vitamins are a group of heterogeneous compounds of which each is essential for proper operation of various processes in the body. There are main six vitamins. Four are fat-soluble, viz. A, D, E and K, whereas B and C are water-soluble. Vitamins like riboflavin, vitamin B2 and nicotinamide, vitamin B5, are necessary for production of FADH2 and NADH2 respectively. Water there is about 65 to 70 percent water in our body. Each cell contains 70 percent water weight by weight. Blood plasma also contains 90 percent of water. Functioning of cells and thereby whole body disturbs even if there is a little loss of water from the body. Hence, water is an essential nutrient. Fibers Along with all the above mentioned nutrients, fibers are also essential nutrients. In fact, we cannot digest the fibers. However, they help in the digestion of other substances and ingesting of undigested substances. We obtain the fibers from leafy vegetables, fruits, cereals, etc. Cell division, an essential life process. Cell division is one of the very important properties of cells and living organisms. Due to this property only, a new organism is formed from existing one. A multicellular organism grows up an emaciated body can be restored. There are two types of cell division, known as mitosis and meiosis. Mitosis occurs in somatic cells and stem cells of the body, whereas meiosis occurs in germ cells. How cell is structurally organized? Each cell has a nucleus. Beside that, other cell organelles are also present. Where the chromosome is present? Chromosome is present inside the cell nucleus. Single chromosome is present in N condition. Pair of chromosome is present in 2N condition. This is the structure of chromosome showing short arm, centromere, long arm and DNA. Mitosis Let us study mitosis. Somatic cells and stem cells divide by mitosis. Mitosis is completed through two main steps. Initially, karyokinesis or nuclear division occurs and then cytokinesis or cytoplasmic division occurs. Karyokinesis comprises of four steps prophase, metaphase, anaphase and telophase. In prophase, condensation of basically thin thread-like chromosome starts. Due to this, they become short and thick and they start to appear along with their pairs of sister chromatids. Centrioles duplicate and each centriole moves to opposite poles of the cells. Nuclear membrane and nucleolus start to disappear. Metaphase Nuclear membrane completely disappears in metaphase. Chromosomes complete their condensation and become clearly visible along with their sister chromatids. All chromosomes are arranged parallel to equatorial plane or central plane of the cell. Special type of flexible protein fibers or spindle fibers are formed between the centromere of each chromosome and both centrioles. Anaphase In anaphase, centromeres split and thereby sister chromatids of each chromosome separate and they are pulled apart in opposite directions with the help of spindle fibers. Separated sister chromatids are called as daughter chromosomes. Chromosomes being pulled appear like bunch of bananas. In this way, each set of chromosomes reach at two opposite poles of the cell. Telophase 
the chromosomes which have reached at opposite poles of the cell now start to decondense, due to which they again become thread-like thin and invisible. Nuclear membrane is formed around each set of chromosomes reached at poles. Thus, two daughter nuclei are formed in a cell. Nucleolus also appears in each daughter nucleus. Spindle fibers completely disappear. In this way, karyokinesis completes and cytokinesis begins. Cytokinesis The cytoplasm divides by cytokinesis and two new cells are formed which are called as daughter cells. In this process, a notch is formed at the equatorial plane of the cell which deepens gradually and thereby two new cells are formed. However, in case of plant cells, instead of the notch, a cell plate is formed exactly along the midline of the cell and thus cytokinesis is completed. Mitosis is essential for growth of the body. Besides, it is necessary for restoration of emaciated body, wound healing, formation of blood cells, etc. Meiosis Meiosis is completed through two stages. These two stages are meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. Meiosis 1 comprises of four stages, namely prophase 1. Further, prophase 1 comprises of leptotene, zygotene, pachytene, diplotene, dikinesis, and then metaphase 1, anaphase 1, and telophase 1. In meiosis 1, recombination or crossing over occurs between homologous chromosomes and thereafter those homologous chromosomes and not sister chromatids are divided into two groups and thus two haploid cells are formed. After meiosis 1, meiosis 2 occurs. Meiosis 2 is just like mitosis. In this stage, the two haploid daughter cells formed in meiosis 1 undergo division by separation of recombined sister chromatids and four haploid daughter cells are formed. Process of gamete production and spore formation occurs by meiosis. In this type of cell division, four haploid daughter cells or N are formed from one diploid cell or 2N. During this cell division, crossing over occurs between the homologous chromosomes and thereby genetic recombination occurs. Due to this, all the four daughter cells are genetically different from parent cell and from each other too. We can study various phases of cell division by the following experiment. Apparatus required for the experiment are conical flask, glass slides, cover slips, forceps, compound microscope, watch glass, etc. Materials required for the experiment are medium-sized onion, iodine solution, etc. Procedure Take a medium-sized onion, keep it in a conical flask filled with water in such a way that the roots of onion will be in contact with the water. Observe the roots of onion after 4 to 5 days. Cut the tips of some of the roots and put them in a watch glass. Pour some drops of iodine in watch glass. Take one of the root tips on the glass slide and press it with the help of forceps. Add one or two drops of water and carefully place cover slip over it in such a way that air will not be trapped in between. Observe the prepared glass slide under the compound microscope. At different time intervals, we can see different phases of cell division.